Hello friends, thank you for joining me today. Today we are going to read Lily's Purple Plastic Purse. I'd like you to take a look at the cover of this book. Where's the title at? I noticed the title is in big letters. It says Lily's Purple Plastic Purse. Where's the author at? I noticed our sight word by, and there's the author, Kevin. Hankins. Let's go ahead and get started. Lily loved school. Because I love school. She loved the pointy pencils. She loved the squeaky chalk. And she loved the way her boots went clickety, clickety, click down the long, shiny hallways. Lily loved the privacy of her very own desk. She loved the fish sticks and the chocolate milk every Friday in the lunchroom. What's your favorite lunch that you have at school from the cafeteria or from home? And most of all, she loved her teacher, Mr. Slinger. It says, for you, she brought him a flower. Mr. Slinger was as sharp as a tack. That means he was very smart. He wore artistic shirts. If you look close at the illustration, he has a cool design on his shirt. He wore glasses on a chain around his neck and he wore a different colored tie for each day of the week. Wow, said Lily. That was just about all she could say. Wow. Instead of greeting students or good morning pupils, Mr. Slinger winked and said, howdy. That means hello. He thought the old fashioned desks and rows were boring. Do you think rodents could think you could handle a semicircle? That's kind of how well we sit on the carpet sometimes. And he always provided the most tasty snacks. They were curly and crunchy and cheesy. I wanna be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Me too, said her friends, Chester, Wilson, and Victor. Think back to what we just read on this page. Why does Lily like her teacher? At home, Lily pretended to be Mr. Slinger. I'm the teacher, she told her baby brother, Julius. Listen up. Lily even wanted her own set of deluxe picture encyclopedias. What's with Lily, asked her mother. I thought she wanted to be a surgeon or an ambulance driver or a diva, said her father. It must be because of her new teacher, Mr. Slinger, said her mother. Wow, said her father. That was just about all he could say. Wow. What do you want to be when you grow up? Whenever the students had free time, they were permitted to go to the light bulb lab in the back of the classroom. They expressed their ideas creatively through drawing and writing. Lily went often. She had a lot of ideas. She drew pictures of Mr. Slinger and she wrote stories about him too. During Sherry time, Lily showed her creations to the entire class. Wow, said Mr. Slinger. That was about all he could say. Wow. It says, big, friendly, Mr. Nice Man teacher. And at the very last second, Mr. Slinger saved the cold, starving elderly. When Mr. Slinger had bus duty, Lily stood in line, even though she didn't ride the bus. Why do you think Lily would stand in the bus line, even if she didn't ride the bus? Lily raised her hand more than anyone else in class, even if she didn't know the answer. And she volunteered to stay after school to clap erasers. I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Excellent choice, said Mr. Slinger. On Monday morning, Lily came to school especially happy. She had gone shopping with her Grammy over the weekend. Why do you think, if you look at the illustrations, why is Lily extra happy? Lily had a new pair of movie star sunglasses complete with glittery diamonds and a chain like Mr. Slinger's. She had three shiny quarters and best of all, 
she had a brand new purple plastic purse that played a tune when it was opened. That means it played music when she opened it. Lily wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger, listen to our story. Lily had a hard time listening. Lily really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Let's be considerate of our classmates. Lily had a hard time being considerate. That means thinking of them and letting them do their learning. Lily really, really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Wait until recess or sharing time. But Lily could not wait. So I want you to look closely at this illustration. How do you think Mr. Slinger is feeling with Lily interrupting so much? What do you think is going to happen next? The glasses were so glittery. The quarters were so shiny and the purse played so much nice music, not to mention how excellent it was for storing school supplies. Look, Lily whispered fiercely. Look, everyone, look what I've got. Everyone looked, including Mr. Slinger. He was not amused. It means he was not very happy. Why do you think Mr. Slinger was not very happy with what Lily was sharing? I'll just keep your things at my desk until the end of the day, said Mr. Slinger. They'll be safe there and then you can take them home. Lily's stomach lurched. It means her stomach didn't feel very good. She felt like crying. Her glasses were gone. Her quarters were gone. Her purple plastic purse was gone. Lily longed for her purse all morning. She was even too sad to eat the snack Mr. Slinger served before recess. That afternoon, Lily went to the lightning bolt lab. She was still very sad. She thought and she thought and she thought, and then she became angry. She thought and she thought some more. Then she became furious. She thought and she thought and she thought a little bit longer, and then she drew a picture of Mr. Slinger. Is that a very nice picture that Lily drew of her teacher? Right before the last bell, Lily sneaked the drawing into Mr. Slinger's book bag. When all the teacher or when all the students were buttoned and zipped and snapped and tied and ready to go home, Mr. Slinger strolled over to Lily and gave her her purple plastic purse back. It's a beautiful purse, said Mr. Slinger. Your quarters are nice and jingly, and those glasses are absolutely fabulous. You may bring them back to school as long as you don't disturb the rest of the class. I do not want to be a teacher when I grow up, Lily said, as she marched out of the classroom. On the way home, Lily opened her purse. Her glasses and quarters were inside, and so was a note from Mr. Slinger. It said, today was a difficult day. Tomorrow will be better. There was also a small bag of tasty snacks at the bottom of the purse. Why do you think Mr. Slinger would have left the note and the snacks in Lily's bag for her? Maybe he knew she was having a hard day and was feeling pretty upset, so he wanted to help her feel a little bit better, even though he still had to take her purse. Lily's stomach lurched. She felt like crying. She simply felt awful. Lily ran all the way home and told her mother and father everything. Why is Lily feeling awful right now? What happened earlier in the story with the drawing? Instead of watching her favorite cartoons, Lily decided to sit in the uncooperative chair. That's kind of like a timeout chair. It says, I'll stay here for a million years for Mr. Slinger. Why does everything happen to me? 1,051, 1,052. That night, Lily drew a new picture of Mr. Slinger and wrote a story about him too. It says, Lily was really, really sorry, so everyone forgave her, even her parents, even her stinky baby brother, even her incredible teacher. And then the sun shined its smiley face down on everyone and everything and even the bugs and the worms. The end. How is this picture of her teacher nicer?
Lily's mother wrote a note and Lily's father baked some tasty snacks for Lily to take to school the next day. I think Mr. Slingler will understand, said Lily's mother. I know he will. It says, how could he resist cheese balls? What does it say? The next morning, Lily got to school early. These are for you, Lily said to Mr. Slinger, because I'm really, 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 really sorry. Why do you think the author chose to write the words really that many times and in that shape? Maybe he wanted to let the readers know that she really, really, really is sorry. That it's very important to her. Mr. Slinger read the story and he looked at the picture and he read the note and he sampled the snacks. That means he ate them. Wow, said Mr. Slinger. That was all about he could say. Wow. What do you think we should do with this? asked Mr. Slinger. He has the old picture. Could we just throw it away? asked Lily. Excellent idea, said Mr. Slinger. During sharing time, Lily demonstrated the many uses and unique qualities of her purple plastic purse, her shiny quarters, and her glittery movie star sunglasses. It says, it's like having an extra pocket with a radio inside. Three quarters are even better than a dollar because they make more noise. Glamorous protection from harmful rays. Then she did a little performance using them as her props. It's called an interpretive dance, said Lily. Mr. Slinger joined in. Wow, said the entire class. That was just all about they could say. Wow. How did Lily make things right with her teacher? What did she do to apologize? Throughout the rest of the day, Lily's purse and the quarters and sunglasses were tucked safely inside her desk. She peeked at them often, but did not disturb them. What choices did Lily make today that were better with her purse? Right before the last bell rang, Mr. Slinger served Lily snacks to everyone's delight. What do you want to be when you grow up? asked Mr. Slinger. A teacher, everyone responded. Lily's response was the loudest. Excellent choice, said Mr. Slinger. As the pupils filled out of the classroom, Lily held her purple plastic purse close to her heart. Mr. Slinger was right. It had been a better day. Why was it a better day for Lily? What happened in the last couple of pages? Lily ran and skipped and hopped and flew all the way home. She was so happy. She really did want to be a teacher when she grew up. That is, when she didn't want to be a dancer or a surgeon or an ambulance driver or a diva or a pilot or a hairdresser or a scuba diver. And that is the end of our story, friends. Thank you so much for listening. See you soon.